Special thank you to Seed and Stone Cidery and Lucky Buzz Meadery for sponsoring the show today. Uh, they help to make this show possible and supply us with the, the occasional beverage when we're out there. They've got 10 uh, taps full of meads and ciders made right there in house. They've also got all sorts of awesome events going on, including an open mic. Uh, almost every single Thursday where you can come out and show your musical talent. So all you songwriters out there, uh, stop out and grab a cider or a mead and tell them that the songwriters couch and the Patrick Joen band sent you. Again, Seen and Stone Cidery right here in Rochester, New York. Go out and visit them and let them know we sent you. Thanks, guys. Welcome to episode number 20, what is it, 29 of the uh, Songwriters Couch. And today on the show, we have a very special guest. I don't know her at all, and so it would be an interesting deep dive into, into her personality. But before we introduce her uh, to our audience here, I do want to say thank you to our sponsors, Seed and Stone, uh, and to uh, all you potential sponsors out there, they're going to offer us lots and lots of money in the future. Um, we do have a, a, a lot of people that are interested in products, and so uh, reach out to us. But thank you to Seed and Stone for sponsoring this episode. Thank you to everyone who watches and listens. Um, and, uh, you know, we do have merch available. We do have, um, what else do we have? Patreon, where you can sponsor the show for as little as a dollar a month. I'm sure there is better things your dollar can be going to than us. Um, but we want your dollar here because uh, otherwise we can't um, we can't continue. So uh, thank you all that. And then uh, the graphic down there will say like, subscribe, etc. I know Ali's giving me, Ali's giving me his shit. What are you doing with your hand there? What is that? Oh, move. Oh, this? Well, that's not going to happen. Um, so uh, thank you. And now we can finally announce our guest. The one... The only, I'm going to introduce you as the Voodoo Gypsy, and then you can go from there. So welcome to the show. Awesome. Thank you for having me. I am the Voodoo Gypsy. You may call me Julianne, though, All right. um, on the show. Um, so what I, where you can find me, um, I am on Instagram um, at the Voodoo Gypsy, and also I have a SoundCloud with one song out so far. Um, it is called um, Men Are Weird, exclamation oh. point. <laughs> Very apropos for this show. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I also have a YouTube at The Voodoo Gypsy. So those three socials. I like the branding across all your... All your platforms. There. Well, it's, it's very, very unique, so uh, no one took it, so uh, That's good. it worked out in my favor. Awesome. So where did, where did the voodoo gypsy come from? As a matter of fact, let's not get into that just yet, hmm. because okay. we do have our our uh, little icebreaker that we've been doing, uh, and I keep promising that we're going to have some sort of like a theme song to it that pops up, and I don't, I don't, I never fucking do it. Like the you know? Jeopardy theme yeah, song? Yeah, something like ding. Well, I don't, I don't think we can even do that, right? We get a copyright strike if I just hum it. If I don't do the third note, it doesn't count, right? It doesn't count. <laughs> um, so we're going to do our, our two truths and a lie. And for those of you that just uh, are just watching us for the first time or just listening for the first time, what that is is um, uh, Julianne here is going to say three things, and I like to call them facts, but not all of them are in fact facts. Uh, play that word. Um, two of them are lies. Um, can you do me a favor, Julian? Can you just talk into your mic real quick? Hello, world. How are you? Okay, beautiful. You. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to need you to actually get closer when you talk to, because yep. I'm, I'm noticing it's uh, it's looking pretty low on there uh, yeah. when you did okay. talk. But, okay, <laughs> we're going to get into this this game here. So two truths and a lie. You're mm -hmm. going to tell me three things. I'm going to do my best to try and guess which one out of them is the untruth. Right? And uh, since I don't know you very well, it might be very easy to fool me because even people that I know very well that have done it, I've, I've gotten it wrong. 
It depends, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we'll see. So do you have your uh do you have your options ready? I'll do a little drum roll before you. I believe I have it. All right. What's your first statement? I always I don't know what to call them. Statements. What's your first statement? Statement number one. Suspenseful music. <laughs> <laughs> so um I Yes. That wasn't very suspenseful. But that was not. That was very uplifting. I it warmed tried. my heart a little bit, actually. Did it? Yeah, it did. Oh. It's nice. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, so I actually, in my free time back in high school and middle school, I did algebraic equations for fun during my study hall and breaks, um, just to expand my mind. And um, I just huh. enjoyed mathematics a lot, and I kind of excelled at it. So there was that um, statement number two, suspenseful music. <laughs> okay. Did it war? Did it also warm your heart when I did it again? Not as much the second A time. A smidge. It didn't work the second time. I know. I yeah. had to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the second statement here? We got ah uh, second statement. I actually, if you are a local Rochesterian, you may know of Claudia Hoysier as a local country artist who is currently kind of making it big. Um, she actually performed for my 16th birthday party, um, and it was like a private event, and she got to play at my 16th birthday party, and we got matching bracelets. Oh, my. Yes. Well, now we've got props involved, so I think either this is this is a big time. I mean, I do have a bunch of jewelry on. I could have pointed to any right. one of that my is, that is true pieces of jewelry. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. All right. What's the third? The third one. Yes, the third. Suspenseful <laughs> music. <laughs> that was a little bit better. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. I um, love, 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 love iguanas. Now, I have like a separated um, like section of my room, a shrine, hmm. might you call it, for iguanas. <laughs> I mean, people have their hobbies. People have their things that they enjoy. Right. And mine are iguanas, cactuses, little things like that. I, I killed... It, like, I'm very bad with plants. I grew up in Queens, right? Um, so I'm, I'm very terrible with plants. I've actually killed cactuses by... I just water them. How dare you? I, That's I, actually I have, very offensive, yeah, in I my have, opinion. I have this thing with plants where I feel... I constantly, like, feel bad for them. Like, they're dry, and so I keep watering them all the time. And then I ended up killing them. I see. But I don't do that to iguanas, though. Or children. Children, I have two of them that are still alive, so that's good. I managed to do that. So yeah, let's let's recap. So mathematics for fun, mm -hmm. which actually my older brother did that, and then he went back to college because he didn't go to college initially. So he started studying like mathematics textbooks, and then went back to college. But mathematics for fun. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go out of order. Iguanas and cacti shrine. Yes. Musician or suspenseful. And Claud Claudia Hoisier. Hoisier. I always wondered how. Is that how it's said? Or yeah, it, she was on that eyed commercial. I believe that's how she pronounced it. Hmm. Or the announcer. Pro so that's pretty yeah. specific. And I saw you point. I mean, all of them are pretty specific. Yeah. But I saw you point to your. I'm going with Claudia one. Hmm. I don't have a mic on, so you have to pull my answer. Do you know the answer? You do? Okay. I'm going to go with the iguanas that you actually don't like them. Don't don't let me know just yet. I'm gonna go with don't like iguanas, and the reason I say that is because I don't know why I'm saying that, but I think mm. I think that's what it is. I think that the 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 lizard uh, thing is not your thing. Not my so let's thing. get some let's get some suspenseful. Which one is the? I believe for the second time in the show, you actually won. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm not even lying. Winner, winner, <laughs> chicken dinner. I do like cactuses, just not iguanas. Not they kind of freak me out. Huh? What is it? There, did you have a bad experience with an iguana? Or 
No, they just look like a dinosaur. Yeah, they like are something's little... wrong with them. Have, Have you, you seen the, them? the like giant, those giant, what are those called? Monitor lizards? Where they're like the size of like a friggin' dog. Have you seen those things? The big giant yeah. uh, monitor lizards? I wouldn't mind having one of those, like just walking it around the, the neighborhood, you know, on like a leash. Yeah, guys, this is my pet iguana. <laughs> and just, right. Right. he's just on a leash. Uh, yeah, and while he's on the leash, he's just eating stray flies so they don't hit you in the face. <laughs> right. Or mosquitoes. They definitely protect you from mosquitoes. I went, so my daughter had a, uh, uh, a uh, hamster. Mm-hmm. For a while, and I kept trying to convince her to put a like a, a collar and a leash on it and walk it around the neighborhood because <laughs> I just thought it would be funny to to have you know my daughter walking around with a hamster on leash. I think it would take probably like a month and a half just to get around the block though. Have you because hamster legs are a little like that? But. Have you heard that thing where hamsters just die of unknown causes all the time? Huh? Like natural causes? No, no, just very unknown. Like hamsters themselves, there's like this thing on the internet where people come forth like it's like a TikTok where everyone comes forth and is like, yeah, my hamster died from an electrical shock because there's just so many random coincidences mm. of hamsters dying of just crazy things. Like one of them I saw on a TikTok, like this girl was talking about her hamster and she was like. Yeah, it kind of just jumped out my window. <laughs> <laughs> he committed suicide. The yeah, hamster? I had a I had a fish that used to do that. His name was Gary, um, and it was a uh, one of the beta fishes. Hey, Ali, can you just move to the? Um, so it was a beta fish, but it used to jump out of the the fish tank or whatever it was in all the time like i'd come home from work or whatever and it would just be luckily i would always catch it right after it did it uh, but it would always be like hanging out like flopping around on the table where it was <laughs> sitting um and then surprisingly it lasted i think almost two years or something like that, like a year and a half and finally i was like oh it's dead like it didn't, wasn't moving or anything like that You're like, we had thank a, god i don't did, have to deal with it right, again. <laughs> yeah. so we had the, the you know the fish Typical fish funeral where you're yeah. all standing in the bathroom, you know, the Spidio Santos, <laughs> you know, you're doing the whole the whole thing or whatever. And my daughter was really young at the time, and she had named the fish Gary uh, because we had this little um, little the, you know the snail from SpongeBob. Yes. So we had, she had named it after that. Um, and so I'm like, you know, we say our whole thing. I dump it into the into the toilet, <laughs> and then I hit the. I hit the flusher, and as soon as I hit the flusher... It starts to swim a little bit. You see its arms... <laughs> and I'm like, oh, come here, Maya. And I, like, hug her, you know, because there's no... I'm not reaching into the toilet to grab this fish, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to Gary. Or maybe he's living his best life now out in the sewers of Rochester, New York. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. But, but that could be know. his best life, you know? Um, so thank you for being on the show. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so you used to read mathematics or do them, stuff. yeah. Either way, huh. yeah. It's in, like I said, my brother actually used to do that. Uh, Algebraic well. equations. What, have you yeah. always liked math, or was it something like uh, out of the blue for you? It was just out of the blue. I like puzzles, and algebra is like puzzles, and I'm good at finding different patterns and stuff like that. So when I know a pattern, it's just very easy just to dissect it down and just do it so naturally i remember back in high school i could just do algebra so and so naturally and um were you part of the generation where um what's the name of that that uh common core common core did you learn that that stuff so my kids were part of like one of the i think one of the first yeah it's like this new way of doing math it's very strange interesting yeah. like the new formulas that they give kids nowadays yeah it's not even a formula it's like a way of breaking down the numbers in oh, your yeah. head it's kind of like probably what you do naturally like you you take like so if you're adding like 55 and 20 right instead of saying okay what's 55 plus 20 you say you, you say like there's 10 groups of or five groups of 10 and I then feel like... two groups of 10, and you add those together, and then mm-hmm. add, it's a real... I don't understand it completely. Honestly, I but. feel like they just overcomplicate things for kids, but that's my little I opinion. Agree <laughs> I agree on that. So was your love of mathematics, uh, do you think that also translates to your musical? You know what? I You can correlate music with math and any dynamic. I mean... 
you can think about it in a technological way. Um, if you go into different programs, um, you can see how it breaks down and how even I like science as well. And I like uh, different how words. Um, <laughs> right. I'm drinking I'm drinking some cognac over here. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just like science and math in general. And it's funny because I had very low grades in school, but mm. you know, it it is what it is. You like what you like, but it might not project with a number, yeah. you know, per se. But um I like in a scientific mathematical perspective how sound moves through any room. Like this room, for example, how the microphone picks up. Like I just did my own little study on microphones and how they work mm. and how different microphone setups work and how um they sound moves through different walls and how it bounces off walls how you can set up the amps where it needs to be or um the speakers where they need to be are to you pick up so are you taking yeah. like music in school Is that i'm out of school and i did just... not take okay. any no so what, kind what of self-taught what originally got you into music were your, were your like family friends like what was the did you grow up in a musical family or i did definitely you did? Yeah, I um grew up in a very musical family. My very earliest memory was playing rock band. You know, that little setup they have. I believe it's called rock band. I might be a fluke thing. I don't know. But it was my two brothers at the time, um, me, my mom, my dad, and we set up like um the little um gaming guitar and little yeah, drum rock, set rock band right? rock think... band yeah and you have it up on the screen and it plays a song and someone's on guitar like a fake d guitar but it has little buttons on it and you strum it and then someone's on drums like i know my brother his name's mark he did the drums my brother mike i believe he did guitar a little bit and then me and my mom we were both singing and i remember we did i have the tiger every time because it was like our favorite song <laughs> That is a good song. That is a good song. It was so good. Is, um, <laughs> uh, are they actual, like, is your brother the older, younger? Where are they? Older, yeah. Older. So are they musicians? Um, they are not as musicians. Well? Like actual, yeah. okay. So they just took up drums and whatever on the, in the game itself. Yeah, they were just uh, messing around in their younger years, you know. So your, you said, who was the music, the musicians in your family then? It was your... I would say my dad is a pretty big musician. He plays guitar. He actually... Congratulations to him. Him and his friend are doing this. I would say, I think it's like a work conference thing, but he him and his friend are going to go up on stage and play like an hour long set of songs where he's playing guitar. His friend's going to be playing oh, the nice. guitar and his friend's going to be singing. Is that here in Rochester? I am unsure where it's gonna be. All right. Well, we I could have plugged. We could have plugged him to the millions <laughs> and millions of people that watch this podcast every day. Yeah. Uh, no, it's like four or five. Typically. Oh. Okay. No, it's more than. It's like a few more than that. But gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I only care about four or five of you. Just want you all to know that. <laughs> um, so, so when did you get into actually playing? Like starting to play instruments and things like that. Were there instruments laying so around the I house? So when I was like, yeah, we had. A bunch of instruments laying around the house. My childhood home, we had like a music room, a room dedicated to music, like different musical instrument instruments lined up on each wall and whatnot. And um, hmm. uh, I remember my older brothers, I looked up to them a lot and they uh, played piano because they did piano lessons. And I remember like it was an authentic piano. So what I would do, I was like, five years old what i would do is just sit under the piano listening to all the little sounds that the piano would make mm -hmm. um it was just such a beautiful sound that the piano made and every single time that they had a lesson i'd sit there and listen and i just told my parents or however the story went um <laughs> <laughs> i think i either told them or they just got the hint that i wanted to play uh piano that um that i think i was like I don't know. I think I had to be at least six when I started piano. And then for, I would say, mm, 15 years, I was just doing private lessons. Hmm. Um, singing and songwriting 
was something that kind of came naturally to me. I remember just randomly making random sounds, like doing weird impersonations, even though I do not know how to do impersonations. So do not (laughs) ask me to. I was just... I don't know, you know, when you do vocal stims, yeah. me as a younger kid would do vocal skim, stims around the house just very randomly and just do what it, impression. <laughs> before you just skip over that, what is a what is a vocal? Vocal stim? It's like something, you know, when, hmm, how to describe it? Um, You know, when something just words hold on so <laughs> so like you're imitating basically vocal... if something's like i don't know something gets caught in your brain and you're like wow that's like something funny or something how that person said it was like so unique and you want to say it over and over again because like um it just is fun to like, say like the way that rihanna says mirror in what <laughs> Uh, she says, Mi- "What I forget what song it is, uh, but she says mirror, mirror, mirror yes. instead of mirror." I, I think that could songs. be considered a vocal stem. Yeah. Right. Well, we learn something new every day on on this uh, <laughs> this show because I did not know that that term, and I don't know if it's if it's something that uh, it could be even just like a reference to something, like a reference, an online reference, and you just repeat it throughout the day. Mm-hmm. That could be considered a vocal stem, or just. I don't know, something that catches your brain that you can't let go. It's almost like, wow, why can't I stop saying this? Like, it's like a repeated phrase that you keep saying throughout your head. I don't know. <laughs> you, you said you're the youngest? I am or not the, the youngest. Or are you the middle? I would think that I'm a middle child. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think so. I have like a bunch of siblings. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the reason I asked that is because I'm also I'm a middle child as well. And my older brother played guitar. Um, I play, you know different instruments and I sing and I I mostly do songwriting. He's a much, my older brother is much better lead player than I am guitar Mm -hmm. wise. Um, But I always, I was always into the writing, like writing songs and, and doing vocals to it and writing lyrics. Um, And I think that came from me wanting to do poetry and stuff too. Um, But it's interesting to me in, in a family, especially if there's musically inclined people in that family that some people don't because my little brother He's tried to learn guitar every now and again, but he's not. He wasn't as into it as mm-hmm. like me and my older brother were. So, yeah. what what do you think led you to be to follow through for fifteen years on it? Versus, I'm assuming your older brothers at some point they took piano lessons and they were like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm traveled done onto with their it. own path." Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know what exactly led me to this point I just know as a kid I would just randomly write stuff down like I remember in the third grade I was I told my best friend at the time because everyone had best friends when they were young (laughs) it was cute but um (laughs) I I just told my best friend at the time like hey I wrote a song it was just about Mm. a little bird outside that I saw (laughs) (laughs) and you know what I did in third grade I performed that entire little song in front of my entire third grade class Hmm. i can't recall what led to that but i just remember just all the time just humming in my head singing little tunes and you Hmm. know just a little kid thing to do i guess (laughs) let let me ask you this because i've i've as i've gotten older um things musically um, have changed not just for me, but in, in general in the world, right? When I was younger, um, the playlist kind of culture of listening to music where it's a bunch of different artists, a bunch of different songs off of different albums, you know, they're they're generally in a playlist or you're just listening to a single or whatever. When I was younger, it was a lot more of listening to one single album simply because the medium that you were listening to and on it to it on like a cassette tape or a, a, a record or uh, even a CD. Yeah, you could skip, but in general you had one CD in your CD player. And so you would kind of like listen to the whole CD That's how just it was. because it yeah. was. Um, and I feel like with M- the introduction of like MP3s and the way people are listening to music now, it, it's changed so much where people aren't listening to like full albums. Cause I remember using, used to, I used to lay in my bedroom and I'd, Sneak a little bit of the uh, the jazz cabbage. Do you know mm-hmm. what that is? Yeah. Um, so uh, <laughs> my, if my parents are watching this, I didn't do that ever. 
but I did do it. Uh, and I would listen to full albums like mm-hmm. all the way through, like as entertainment, uh, as opposed to like watching a movie or, or, or in, in place of it or in addition to whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes you watch like the Wizard of Oz with the Pink Floyd album while doing the Jazz Cabbage, you know what I mean? Um, but like when you were, when you were young and even now, like how do you ingest music? Like do you listen to a full album? Do you like just randomly listen to playlists? Like how do you get So what I do new... is I am a very eclectic taste. I have listened to so many different genres of music, even country. People can debate if country is good or not. I listen to some country here and there. Against my will, <laughs> but I still I still went to a few country concerts. So like you, who? Um, I went to Florida Georgia Line when they were still relevant. <laughs> uh, I went to see Dan and Shay. I've went to see Kane Brown, um, artists like that, kind of like pop country ish. Yeah. yeah, I was um, always into Johnny Cash out of the country. I n- I didn't listen to a lot of country stuff either. Yeah, I know I'm very old. (laughs) But like growing up in Queens, there's not a lot of country music. I feel like up here, there's a little bit more. Like people people are into that. I feel like it's like the new trend that's going on that country's like kind of taking a boom start and pop artists like Beyonce are making like music that are kind of like a country feel, which I think is really cool. You know, how do you how do you feel about about Beyonce's country album? Tell me re- for real. I Don't have... lie. Okay. Don't oh, lie. I'm not going to lie. I'll know if you're lying. You could tell from the beginning when we did the th- three Well, I'm a th- terrible liar, <laughs> so I mean. <laughs> How do you, Did you listen to it all the way through? I'm going to be honest, and the people watching are going to be like, oh my, no. <laughs> but, uh, I'm going to say this once, and we're not going to bring it up again because it's probably disappointing. I am not a Beyonce fan. Mm. I have not listened to that. You hear that? You I'm hear so that, sorry. Queen Bee? What, what is this? She call her social? That's right. Oh, yeah. oh is it? Is it real? Um, Please I, don't I, I'll be me. honest. After, <laughs> after Survivor and, um, and Destiny's Child, I wasn't much of a fan either after. Although I do like uh, Drunk in Love. I do like that song for some reason. Yeah. But going back to the original question, since I always stray from the original question. Yeah. <laughs> um, Oh gosh, you might have to repeat it. I'm, uh, I so have ADHD how, how do you brain. Feel, so the album you you feel is? Do you feel she's doing a money grab on it? That's kind of the question I'm asking. Well, I I feel like that's what it is. I more opinion. so think that artists nowadays, especially in the past decade or two decades, what they have done is just either done great samples from different songs, incorporating it into their own. Or they've done remixes from uh, songs from the 80s and 70s and brought it back, which I found really interesting. I would say back in two years, one year ago, like that was the whole theme. The theme was people remixing 70s and 80s songs and incorporating it into their own music. I know Dua Lipa did a whole album on just remixes like from the 80s, I believe. Oh, really? Something like that. Yeah, and which I thought was pretty cool. And um, and you know, she, she sang over, like she remixed and then she sang. She kind of like took some samples and in instrumental from uh 80s, 70s songs and incorporated it into her own music. <laughs> and to this day, I still see uh, newer pop, pop artists do the same exact thing. Where I feel, um, I like follow. Well, I don't follow trends. I'm kind of in my own little pathway here, but I follow trends, meaning I kind of study them. And um, what I've took note on is pop artists these days have kind of um, took back the 80s and mm-hmm. are bringing it back. And now what we're seeing with Beyonce is she's bringing back country and not saying that country was kind of like a fad, but she's bringing it back into pop and people are starting to listen to more country and i've noticed like even on tiktok because tiktok is like a huge platform that everyone goes on to discover new artists like i've noticed that most pop songs now have a country or feel and i find that very interesting the change in trends Hmm. so do you tend to when you listen to music are you listening to popular music or are you are you getting recommendations from friends and and I like how do you, uh, what what the the original question was 
if I can yeah. repeat, what, <laughs> was like, how do you listen to music, to music when yeah. you listen to it? Because I kind of feel like nowadays the, um, the just sitting kind of in a dark room, listening to an entire album play out, those days are gone. Oh, yeah. Right, and <laughs> so I'm I'm yeah. wondering like n- now, like especially um, people that get into music, you have to you have to really be passionate about what uh, what music is, especially to be to have the desire to make it to make music. Right, mm-hmm. you need you need to want to make the music that you're listening to. Mm-hmm. So when you, what's one of your favorite artists that you? Oh, that's you, you, a tough right now. question. I Just right some... now that you're listening to, I guess. That's tough. Oh man, put me on the hot seat. Any, right anyone, <laughs> what, whatever it is um, on your on that you listen to in your car on the way here. Man, this is gonna okay. Um, <laughs> how? What I'm asking is okay. How one did you discover favorite, them? One of my favorite artists right now, and I might butcher their name. Let me go look one second on my phone what they were. So that's amazing. In and of itself is that. Well, and, I, and I noticed that's, that's the case, right? So you can have a favorite song, but you don't know who it is. And, well, it's and more there's that this... I suck at names. Anyone oh, that... can contest to that. <laughs> no, no. I forget names all the time. But, but, so... it's, but I, don't think it's, I don't think it's necessarily that either. I think that people listen to music differently now. I have some songs that I, I've heard that I know mm-hmm. that I, I actually until I look them up, I don't know who the artist is. I feel like back when I was listening to music uh, in like the eighties, nineties, into like early two thousands, what do they call them now? The, the the aughts? Is that what they call them? The two thousands? Anyway, um, but it, it, like I knew the people in the band, mm-hmm. like what their names were. I knew who the band was. I more followed the band and the music they were making then just a song. I mean, there were pop songs that got popular that were kind of like, uh, you didn't know who they were, but I feel like it's almost flipped itself uh, in the last like 15 years, mm-hmm. you know, cause you don't, you don't even know you were probably, you've probably listened to it, whatever it is a bunch of times and you love the song, but you don't even know who the artist is. Right. Well, in my case, like I said, I just suck at names <laughs> and I have like a poor, I have like the memory of a goldfish sometimes. <laughs> I swear I keep repeating this artist's name over and over again. I know them. Like I follow them on Instagram and follow their music, but I, I don't know, you put me on the spot and I was like, oh <laughs> shit, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> so so who, is, who is the, the So artist? recently I discovered this artist. Her name is Sophia Zella, I believe it's pronounced. Hmm. And she's... Oh, not like newer. She's been around for a while. And um, uh, I just found her off of TikTok because, again, TikTok has mm-hmm. just an outstanding platform where you would discover new artists. And I just loved her lyricism and all of her music. And her style was kind of similar to mine and how she produces it because most of my music is produced via my computer. And so when I'm laying down different tracks and whatnot, it's kind of gritty. It's kind of like alternative, a little bit of, I don't know, kind of eccentric feel where it's different from the rest. Kind of like older Billie Eilish type Mm. vibes where it's like weird little nuances and um, ad libs through into the track that you wouldn't think of. And she's kind of like that. And I found it really interesting. And what's cool about her is she started off as a violinist. Mm. And I found that amazing. In some songs, she incorporates some violin into her songs. So I think it's raw and amazing. And one of her songs that she recently um, uh, put out is Cacao. And I don't know if you could say the word, but it's a drug with a C. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Cocaine. Yes, that. I didn't know if we were going to get demonetized for that. (laughs) So um, anyways, (laughs) that song. And it's been on repeat in my car because how it's Trust me, we've been demonetized way before you've been on this this show. (laughs) 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 We say all sorts of weird yeah so that song in particular it's been on repeat in my car i don't know what it is but just it tickles my brain in all the right ways (laughs) is is that where you primarily listen to music is in your car yes like new music (laughs) yeah yeah i think that that's so i remember um i have a story and and ali just happened to uh uh, help me out with this when i was a kid right uh one of the the first one of my first favorite albums 
was Michael Jackson's Thriller, right? Along with millions of other people, I obviously. I love Michael right? Jackson. <laughs> um, but my, my dad had uh, bought me for my birthday a Sony Sports uh, Walkman, mm-hmm. right? It was like a yellow and gray Walkman. I love this fucking thing. I had a fanny pack for it. Mm-hmm. That I would keep it in with a cassette. I had that, and I had Dr. Feelgood by Motley Crue. Are you into like 80s yeah, hair metal yeah. at all? <laughs> so, so Motley Crue's Dr. Feelgood. I had both those tapes, just gotten both the tapes and the, the Walkman in the Fetty Pack. My dad, I was, I was young at this point. I was, I don't even know when that, it was probably like 85, so I must have been five or six. Um, I had left it in a McDonald's. No. The fanny pack with all of that stuff in it. We left, we got in the car, drove, and I was like, Dad, I, I forgot. I forgot my fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> and those are coming back now, too. I mean, yes, I did take note of that. Right I did Trendsetter. That's right. Good on this. Yeah. Hold on. Trendsetter. Don't you fucking forget it. All right, we can go back to the wide. Um, but anyway, I made him go back. It was gone as soon as as soon as I got back. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Uh, Oh, yeah. So the rest of the story. Anyway, Ali ended up buying me a fanny pack and putting in a Walkman and those two cassettes uh, Mm -hmm. uh, in there. And so, um, but Michael Jackson's Thriller was an album. um, I want to talk to you about this because of the generational difference between you and I. Well, and, I grew and up on like a lot of 80s and 70s type vibe yeah, music. And I, I noticed so, that that's the case. Yeah. And, and, and the reason I'm kind of saying this is uh, I'll, I'll get to it eventually. I'm very long winded. Okay. You'll find. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I get to a point eventually. So uh, that album was very iconic. Uh, again, listen to that album. I can't even tell you how many times. Um, but uh, used to listen to it in my headphones, and and uh, obviously I didn't have a car at that point. Like when you were younger, what were you listening to music on? Like an MP3 um, when I was younger, phone? I did an MP3 player, and I also did CDs. Okay. So I was in the car traveling a lot because my older brothers played travel hockey. So I was in the backyard, uh, back. I can't speak. Um, back seat, listening to all these different CDs and whatnot in the back of my car or my parents' car at the time, and um, uh, we were just listening along to um, just a variety of artists. I remember one of my favorite artists at the time was Adam Levine, and just listening to the his older albums were fantastic. I still sing to them these hmm. days. I loved Adam Levine. Unfortunately, I thought he was a woman at first, and then I <laughs> came to realize he was a man. I was like, so, King Slay. <laughs> I, I, can, I can relate to that. So there's a band called Slaughter yeah. back in the 80s. You ever hear of Slaughter? Any I chance? think so. You ever hear of Slaughter? Allie, you know Slaughter? Anyway, lead singer, long hair. Swear to God, thought he was a woman for the <laughs> the entire time I, I liked the band and didn't realize until one day my, my older brother was like, said something and he's like oh he and he called him he yeah it's like wait a second that's a guy like a double that's take like a... <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's like a... anyway yeah uh, so the, the listening to music thing and discovering new music is is very different now than it was like it used to be okay you hear it on the radio and they set these trends the radio that's why they were so important back in the day mm-hmm. um and, and you'd find out about an artist or a new album coming out like Michael Jackson's Thriller or what have you. And then that would be what everyone is listening to. Um, right. It's very much more dispersed now. And discovering new artists, I almost think, is harder even though it's so much more accessible. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's so much music out there. Um, and it's so diverse. And there's so much, so many options that there's no... Um, I don't feel that there is, like back in the day, two or three artists that are setting the tone of the culture in, let's say, America Mm -hmm. um, at a given time. Everyone's just kind of doing their own thing. Uh, And so, the I mean, Billie Eilish kind of came out of nowhere. Thin air. Yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> and, and my daughter loves her. I, I love her. We were actually, as a matter of fact, at the, the uh, Grammys in L.A. Uh, when she won 
those like 12 grand, whatever the fu- 116 Grammys that she ended That's up winning crazy, um, yeah. that, that time, which she a hundred percent deserved um, because it was so different. And, and what I'm trying to get at here is, is you're listening to music in a different way that, that I would listen to it. Um, and so you're probably writing music in a different way than I would write music. Yeah. And so when you do that, how are you approaching the writing process? So, so I tend to think when I'm writing, I want to write an album. Mm-hmm. Are you thinking in that way when you're writing music? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one of my songs has their own type of vo- voice, tone, different type of genre i don't really reside in one genre everything is kind of like different by feel and lyrics and whatnot and um yeah so (laughs) uh when it comes down to how i get my um uh lyrics or song across the board um I, it takes different types of formats. I can either just be singing in my shower, just humming some melodic melody of some sort, and it just would come to me. Then I'd be like, hmm, what type of feel would that be? Then I'd go to my computer, jab in a couple different tracks and lay down different things. Then I'd sing on top of it and be like, huh, that kind of works. Or (laughs) I would lay down the tracks first and then sing over it, which I feel... Mm. As of recently, that's what I've been doing, and it's actually worked a lot better for me, how the creative process kind of flows better out of me when I just lay down the tracks first, then sing. Um, Other times, I just be messing around on the piano, and then I start singing along to whatever I come with, come up with. So so in general, like before recently, you were actually writing melodies before you were writing the rhythm Yes. Sections and that sort of thing to it. Mm-hmm. That's that's actually what my daughter does too. And I've noticed that um, young younger musicians tend to do that. Like they'll write melodies first, which is super difficult to to write back. It's almost like you're you're reverse engineering a song from the melody uh, back to what you know, what the backing is, but, and, I, and I'm wondering why, why that is the case. So when you write though, do you, is it just something you're sitting at the piano or you're sitting somewhere and you're, you're. It could be both. It's either of songs that are written distinctly for piano. Um, or I could just be on my laptop, which is half the time or not half, but most of the majority of the time, um, I would be on my laptop just, being on garage band and um laying down everything that I need to do and um create a song out of it that's more um for the public to hear songs that are for the piano that I've done on piano uh eventually will turn into tracks for the audience to hear via the computer then put out onto social media platforms that sort of thing what what do you tend to write about when you're writing do you write What's musically? Um, pleasing, or is it do you write from a lyrical sense? I write so, from a lyrical percent uh, sense, yes. <laughs> so like you tend to have like a story or something you like a subject matter you want to mm-hmm. make the song about, and yep. then the hmm. yep are are you a poet too? Do you write? Yes, poetry? I write poetry. I think poetry started before the songwriting itself. Hmm. In my opinion, I think poetry took its stance before I started, you know, huh, maybe I could write songs too. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that sort of thing. That that's the same thing for me as a matter of fact. So I started writing poetry and and what have you before I was capable of writing music in a way that could be considered songs you know like it was a lot of noise um but uh when I was when I was younger I was using a four track 
cassette recorder to actually record stuff, which is crazy to do. And and I see people now on YouTube and whatever reviving the four track recorder. And if you've never recorded on a on a four track tape recorder, it's a whole different experience because you have to record linearly. You have to do it in in takes. You mm-hmm. can't just cut stuff, right? And then right. you only have four tracks. And the way that you get around that is you record four tracks. You have to be satisfied with those four tracks. Then you bounce them down to one track, mm-hmm. right? Then you have three free tracks to fuck around with again. Now, here's right? the interesting part. If you take songs from the Beatles and you listen back to their old stuff, it's like you can tell that it's like the four track thing that yep. you're talking about because you could hear a very distinct sound in your left ear versus your right ear and <laughs> you're like, wow, this is so different. And then you realize it's because of the recording process and how they did it. Well, and- <laughs> yeah, it for- it forced, it's so funny because like sometimes the constraints, uh, the constraints of a, uh, of the technical part of music can, can create, um, the intricacies and the nuances of the music that's being creative, just be- or being creative just because of it. Like the four track recorder forced you to be in a box um, where you could record four tracks separately, mm-hmm. and then you had to commit to those four tracks and bounce them. Right? I guess you can record them off site and then bring them back in or whatever if you wanted to. I didn't have that luxury of doing that, so it was always recording the four tracks, bouncing them. And then recording on top of that and sometimes flipping the cassette. That's where the, like the reversing of, of stuff came into place because you, you would just flip the cassette around and then you'd have a reverse track and then you would play to that in the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you had all this weird shit going on. But I'm going to have you uh, in, a, in a minute here perform one of your songs. And this is an original, correct? Correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. um, so what is, what is the song's title? And then... Um, what is the song about? Well, that depends. I can't. can't I'm gonna be honest. I kind of came unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. But that's Fly- okay. I will play. Um, Flying by the seat of your pants is what the show is all about. There we go. <laughs> and and um, uh, oh, you can't cut right now. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. So if you're ever in Rochester, New York, we do a showcase of musicians. Uh, at Seed and Stone, as a matter of fact, every, I think it's third Thursday of the month at Seed and Stone, where we feature new songwriters or or just songwriters in general. They tell the stories behind their songs, kind of like writers in the round in Nashville. Um, you've seen them do. Uh, it's really fun, and, and Julianne here is going to be on that this month, April Twenty something. Uh, we'll post it in the, <laughs> in the description. <laughs> April, are you looking it up for me? Or you're trying to help me. All right, thank you very. <laughs> thank you. April something. Uh, it'll be on, and you'll be there. So if you are April in Rochester, 27th. yeah, come yeah. out and watch. Um, so why don't we have you get on the piano there, and you, you have it on there. So um, yes. Um, do you want me to still talk about the song? Or? Yeah. Yeah. What's the uh, What's the song about? So. How do I say this appropriately? Um, well, okay. Well, words can be perceived in many different manners, but um, the song is about... Um, it could be about two subjects or two people, whoever the case may be, um, and it can... It's just about love. I don't know. All right. It could be about anything. You want it to be? <laughs> I don't know. So kind of, kind of I like mean, a love song. Oh, wow. so what's the name? What's the title of the song? Uh, no ordinary affair. No ordinary affair. So I have, I have also, just so you know, I have yet to hear you perform live because that is it, true. as as it happens, <laughs> even though technically I'm the one that created the open mic at at um, Seed and Stone, uh-huh. uh, I've been very busy, and so I haven't been able to make it out to most of the open mics, and so I apologize for not having, no, you were having okay. seen you <laughs> uh, perform live, but now I get to, to witness the magic that is the Voodoo Gypsy, like that, I remember, there we go. <laughs> right, right here in the studio, so why don't we get you set up, Alrighty. I'm going to talk to our audience here, if you could cut to this camera, thank you, Ali, I appreciate it, and I like the friends, as a matter of fact, you know what I saw? 
I saw someone wearing that same Friends hoodie at the gym, and I wanted to go up to them and ask them if they had been to Universal uh, Studios in L.A. Because, or is it what was it Warner Brothers? A oh, Warner Brothers uh, movie studio, yeah. Um, because I don't think you could get that. <laughs> That's right for eighty bucks better. But the only reason you bought it is because it was fucking freezing that day in L.A. Like of all the the times, uh, I have a fun fun thing to. To, to talk about I, I once drove through Death Valley Right You know like the big desert That's always hot And you gotta be careful Driving cross Cross country Got to Death Valley It rained The whole time I drove Through Death Valley Yeah It rains like every 30 years or something And it just happened to rain That day I bought all this water And stuff to You know uh, oh, Yeah I'm, I, I have that kind of luck With things so um, But it was freezing in LA When we were there But anyway Okay Thank you uh, to everyone that watches. Again, thank you to Seed and Stone for sponsoring the uh, the show. We really appreciate it. Um, and I want to say this. So uh, please go down, like, subscribe, comment. Really helps with the algorithms. They're really trying to screw uh, all the creators over um, by, um, by not allowing things to propagate unless, um, you know, they are specifically um, uh, paid for. Uh, or are already popular, and so any any likes or comments or what have you are, are very much appreciated. Thank you to everyone that's lis- that listens, that watches. Um, please go down and, and do that. We have some great guests coming up and some really cool projects coming out too. Um, follow uh, the Voodoo Gypsy on Instagram and and what have you, and I'll have you you pimp them out, uh, pimp out your stuff again uh, in a few minutes. Um, tell me once again. The name of the song? This is called No Ordinary Affair. No Ordinary Affair. You do have to turn on that microphone. There's a little gray button at the bottom of the microphone. Uh, looks like just a... It's kind of hard to see, but you'll see a green light come on. All the way at the back of it. Yeah, it's a weird... Yeah, I don't know why. I think they put it there so that you don't accidentally hit it. Um, but maybe just talk into there. Uh, so I'm sorry, what was the name of the song again? Okay, sorry. Um, it's called No Ordinary Affair. No Ordinary Affair. Uh, yes. So please go follow, watch, listen. Um, and uh, again, thank you all. We're on episode number 29, which is crazy already. Yeah, we're good. So let's let's hear it. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, wait, cut back to this camera for a second. Allie just said, we can still see you on camera for this, so don't do anything stupid. Uh, I think we all know that that's not possible. Um, But I'm going to try my best, uh, and I think in the first 10 seconds they're going to fail. But go ahead, go ahead, Juliana, uh, please. Juliana. Yes, thank you very much. Already. Uh, there's a left-hand side power button. Hit that. So sorry about that technical difficulties for one brief moment. Hi. Is it on? There we go. Oh, Piano yeah, it's on. it's on. Time to rock and roll, folks. <laughs> All right.
That was unbelievable. Thank you very much. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. So yeah, so so this is our first time doing a piano here on the on the show. So we got to figure that out. I kind of like uh, maybe the performances being in a different uh, a different place like that, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, Ali's Ali's happy with the with the angle of it. So, but it sounded fantastic too. Yeah. But the voice. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> let's, let's do this one more time. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's hear where people can find you yes. and <clears throat> your music and, and anything else you may do. So, um, again, at the Voodoo Gypsy and all the following <laughs> <laughs> social medias, I am on YouTube, Instagram, and SoundCloud. I have one song out. Um, there will be more to come, but I do have to tweak them to make them more, I don't know, ear candy to the Easter, uh, listener. So, um, my one song that is out that is called Men Are Weird, explanation point. So you should definitely There's gotta be a story behind that. There is definitely a story. Are you going to do that at the showcase? Um, I could, yeah. That would be great. if yeah. you, So if you really, really want to know the story <laughs> behind don't tell the story to these oh, guys. Oh, no. They need to come out to the show, to the showcase on April 20th. 27th? 27th. 20, did you end up looking it up over there? Or you didn't? I don't remember. 20 something. We'll post it in the, in the link in the description of the video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you can find out what the meaning behind the song is. Sounds fantastic. That was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Appreciate yeah, it's been, it. It's been a hoot. It's been a hoot, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I will say this. If I ever, because occasionally I do do uh, the eyeliner stuff to myself, yeah. I think I know who to call. Oh, yeah. Uh, I could definitely do that. I'll try not to poke with, your eyeballs out, yeah. though. Well, I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I poke my own eyes out oh. once in a while, so... <laughs> Julianne, thank you thank for being you. on the show. Yes. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. Don't forget we have a Patreon. For God's sakes, help us out. We really appreciate it. Again, thank you to Seed and Stone and uh, uh, Allie. Thank you. <laughs> Until next time, friends. Later. <laughs> <laughs>